Um, welcome everyone to this webinar um, from the Big Ten Wellness Action Alliance. Um, it's titled Life Champions Project, and it's being presented today by the University of Nebraska Medical Center College of Nursing uh, Kearney Division uh, faculty, including um, Assistant Professor Carol Wall, Instructor Shelley Amsbury, Instructor Nancy Stewart, and Assistant Dean and Clinical Associate Professor Catherine Carithers. And so I'm going to welcome um, our colleagues, and I will turn this all over to you all. Thanks. Thanks, Ellis. Um, thanks for the opportunity to, to present on Wellness Wednesday. What a wonderful uh, topic, I think, for today. Our team will discuss our approach toward facilitating student success, growth, and well-being through our Life Champions Project. As mentioned, the University of Nebraska Medical Center Kearney Division uh, is in central Nebraska, and that's our home. We have a beautiful interprofessional campus with traditional baccalaureate, accelerated, and graduate nursing students working side by side with Allied Health, which we believe is a strength for us. In 2018, we first discussed that students increasingly appeared to be struggling. They didn't seem to be prepared for the rigor of the baccalaureate nursing program. Students would tell us they had never gotten a grade below an A. Um, they would tell us that their go-to technique for exam preparation was cramming the night before or a few days before. Uh, they seemed to lack uh, uh, effective coping skills. So when students got a grade below an A, they were devastated and wondered if nursing was the profession for them. Previous interventions that the faculty had used, such as open labs and one-to-one -one coaching, seemed to be less effective, um, the faculty were, were mentioning. And faculty themselves were experiencing signs of fatigue. So the usual approach of just working harder wasn't getting us where we wanted to be. We were familiar with the literature on nurse compassion fatigue and turnover in both the workplace and the profession. And also, we so we also wanted to impact the um, outcomes beyond academia, if at all possible. And so our group formed to identify possible approaches. And as we developed our plan for moving forward, we wanted to holistically address the issues that we felt were being presented to us and hopefully give the students some life skills. We wanted to help the students embrace the realities of their education and really for lifelong learning. And we wanted to introduce them to well-being practices that they could use themselves in the moment over time and also could share with patients and others as appropriate. And we wanted to provide some balance with fun activities that we hope would energize and refresh them. We are all familiar with the different types of capital. Um, in early 2000, there was a movement toward positivity and positive psychology that counterbalanced the prevailing emphasis um, at that time, which was on deficient or dysfunctional behavior. And so the focus became what is right with people instead of what are their weaknesses and what needs to be fixed. And as our team researched the literature, we knew that focusing on students' strengths and guiding the students to know who they were and what they can become was the direction that we wanted to take. Psychological capital or PSYCAP is characterized by four constructs hope, efficacy or, or self-confidence, resiliency, and optimism. Each construct is independently relevant in predicting attitudes and behaviors, and together they're synergistic. PSYCAP is facilitated through specific training interventions. And as we did our research, we found examples of PSYCAP training in the workplace, mostly, uh, and in a university setting with business majors. The studies all demonstrated positive outcomes toward worker uh, or student success and engagement. We did not find that any training had been done with nursing students or with nurses, and so we thought we had a unique opportunity to make an evidence-based difference. As a team, we had also read Angela Duckworth's book on grit. And when you think about nurses, they usually have a passion, and nursing is something many felt called to do for many years. And we felt if there was any profession that had passion and perseverance, it was probably nursing. We wanted to see if there was a relationship between PSYCAP and GRIT 
and look for ways to promote grit within nursing students. And as you can see, um, the terms grit and resilience, they're often used interchangeably in the literature. We did separate them because um, we view them as separate. Grit is about sustained effort toward a goal, where resilience is about the ability to bounce back, especially when there are struggles. We wanted to promote both grit and resilience with the nursing students. And next, I'd like to introduce Shelley Amsbury, who will share our vision and our specific interventions. Thank you, Carol. You've really laid a good foundation for where we started. And this is our, our vision for the project. And it was really to combine the constructs of SICAP with what we'd learned about grit and resilience, and then integrate those combined strategies um, into our classes so that students could use them personally, but also develop a tool belt to use with their clients in their future nursing practice. I mean, these are life skills and we call our team life champions. Our vision diagram is circular and that really represents the ongoing um, process of our work. Let's start with measure down there because that was a piece that really is important to our pilot project. We decided to administer three surveys, the SICAP questionnaire 24 or PCQ 24, the GRIT scale, the mindful self-care scale, and then also to gather some demographics. We determined that using our um, institutional learning management system to house the surveys and the student responses would help us collect the data across the semesters and evaluate the outcomes of the interventions. We plan to add a preference survey in the future uh, so we can learn from the students what strategies they felt were most beneficial to them. The PSYCAP interventions or constructs of hope, efficacy, resiliency, and optimism, or the hero within, and then other um, evidence-based stress reduction measures really align very well uh, with course concepts like motivation and adherence and health promotion. So we were that's our teach part of the vision. We knew we could teach it and include it in our classes. We also aim to practice and share what we learned, beginning with introducing the science for each intervention and then guiding the students to practice those strategies during class time. We um, searched for community experts that could partner with us to bring the science to life and show the students how those interventions are used in practice. We knew it was vital with every step to link it to the evidence to um, give us credibility. You can go to the next slide, Carol. After our planning work, we began the implementation of our pilot by measuring. And um, as Carol said, we started like in 2018, but there was a little break because of the pandemic. But in the fall of 2021, we did PSYCAP training and administered student surveys in the patient-centered care courses in semesters one and three. So those were our two cohorts. We specifically timed this training and the surveys to take place after the students had experienced their first exams of the semester. And for those semester one students, it was their first exams in their nursing program. All of the training occurred during class time, and we think that's important to know. It really elevates the credibility of our work. Um, faculty members from the team were um, in each semester, and they guided students to use the PCI framework, and that's shown here on the slide. Um, it allows, this training allows the students to do some personal reflection and then engage in group conversation and group discussion. The faculty guided the students to individually reflect on something that hadn't really gone as they had expected. And for most of the students at this point, it was an exam or two. And then identify personal resources that were available to them, uh, develop priority goals and pathways to those goals, um, develop a contingency plan based on some potential barriers that they might encounter. Then the students shared their diagrams and their experiences and learnings with the other students in small groups if they felt comfortable doing so. 
Um, and that really helped them to gain insight. And as faculty that was in there, I gained insight. I heard students sharing um, strategies for studying that included opening their textbooks and other students having aha moments by, you know, they hadn't taken the wrappers off of some of their textbooks. So it was really a good time to, for them to share. And then we remeasured um, in semesters two and four by having students review those, uh, their responses, which were in our learning management system, and maybe make some changes in what they had, had put into place. Um, and then we resurveyed at that time. So you can go to the next slide, Carol. And here's some pictures of, of us in action and um, more description of what we've been doing. Some of the strategies that we implemented were practicing gratitude with a gratitude board in our commons area, mindful breathing exercises before exams, and drumming. As you can see here, we, we took uh, groups of students outside on a sunny day and um, learned from a community expert about the benefits of drumming. We brought in a community expert, a nurse um, who talked to our students about aromatherapy and one on yoga. We brought pets in, as you can see, for pet visitation before exams. Our academic success coach, who's also on our team, introduced to both cohorts the benefits of heart math. And that's a technology that we have um, on our college campus. It's a a coherence technology to enforce or enhance focus and reduce anxiety. We used pop-up activities um, that included games in the atrium and creative expression through art. We brought fidget toys into the classroom for students to use. And importantly, we introduced the evidence behind each intervention Students were able to experience the intervention and reflect on how to build them into their self-care and into client cares. A really important element of our work has been to engage the students. And uh, semester two students are doing poster presentations on self-care topics in their EBP course. So they'll learn the science and then disseminate that. Um, semester three students presented to their peers the benefits of creative expression through art or through rock painting. And you can see that there's some of the rocks there. We found them all over the campus. They distributed these little words of positivity um, all over. We really hope to grow this kind of strategy um, during the next phases of the project. And as always with um, projects like this, our data will help us determine our future strategies. And so with that, I will turn it over to Dr. Catherine Crithers. Thank you, Shelley. So I had the pleasure of analyzing our data and I know that the slide is busy. And so forgive me, I will summarize this for you all, but we wanted to describe our students for you. So uh, the students who are graduating this uh, May, um, and really the students who are incoming, our junior students, really um, are, are pretty similar. They are, the majority are 20 to 22 years of age, uh, with uh, the oldest in, as a 23 graduate who is 34, the majority are female, uh, although as you can see, we do have several male students. They are um, mostly third semester students, if they are in third and fourth semester and fourth. However, um, some, uh, as you can see, are at a progression. Their highest degree held, we felt very, uh, very interesting. Most of them, this is their first degree. A few have associate degrees and several have bachelor degrees. So this is a second degree for them. Most of them live with friends but some do live alone and some do live with their families. Schoolwork, this was um, really varied. So uh, about a third of the students uh, spend about nine to 20 hours on schoolwork. This includes class time and study time. About half or a little fewer than half, 16 to uh, 40 hours, and then a few from 40 to 50 hours. 
And then work hours, we were very pleased to see that the majority of students, over 80%, are not working. Those who do work, work between one and 10 hours per week. Next slide. Thank you. In evaluating the uh, surveys for the SCICAP data and the GRIT data, again, really um, comparing the students um, just uh, uh, with the demographic data, the students in um, the 22 grads, so the senior students, both of the cohorts felt self-efficacious. That was their highest. They had self-efficacy. The senior students were hopeful and felt resilient. The lowest was optimism. For the 23 grads or the next year's grads, again, they were self-efficacious. They were a little more resilient and a little less hopeful. And again, their lowest was optimism. But the total scores were really essentially uh, the same. For the GRIT data, both of the co cohorts reported perseverance of effort. They, uh, we were happy to see that. Consistency of interest a little bit lower, but again, the total scores were similar. These were really baseline data, and we have just surveyed the students. Again, we have not analyzed that data, but are looking forward to seeing if there are any changes. And then certainly the 23 uh, graduates will be surveyed next year to see that longitudinal um, data. Next slide. So just to summarize, this project aligned with the University of Nebraska Medical Center and the College of Nursing strategic plan, at, uh, excuse me, related to wellness. We established the baseline data, and as discussed, really, the cohorts were very similar. Efficacy was highest among cohorts, and perseverance of effort was highest among both of the co cohorts. And we really felt like the in-class activities increased opportunity for exposure, which we felt really helped um, the students and the faculty. And with that, I have the distinct pleasure to introduce Nancy Stewart, who will talk about faculty engagement and next steps. Thank you, Catherine. Okay, so first I'm gonna talk about the faculty engagement in, um, currently in the future, and then what our opportunities and challenges were for this project. So first of all, um, faculty engagement, we were very uh, fortunate that um, members of the Life Champions team included faculty and um, staff from every semester in the College of Nursing, which is great because we had a lot of positive energy and buy-in um, that helped to create that crucial thread that helped link the project um, throughout all four semesters from when the students first entered the program through um, graduation itself. Um, our Life Champions Teams meetings, we met weekly or bi-weekly, and that was to keep everyone up to date about what was going on, um, what, what we found was successful, um, anything that we needed to tweak. So we wanted to keep everybody in the loop of what was going on. We began each meeting with a mindful mo movement, um, as well as before class and before exams for our students. So we do some type of um, breathing exercise to help us center ourselves, to clear our minds, and then help us to focus. At our monthly division meetings, we gave um, those meetings a monthly, and we would give updates of what the Life Champions team was doing. We asked for feedback and some input so that everybody felt that they were involved and knew what was going on. And we recently started our journal club. Our first journal, journal article, um, as noted here, was by Shiners and Grave. That is also included in our references. Um, it was an excellent article to start our journal club with um, because um, the article talked about the different um, type of um, generations of students that we have in our um nursing program, and it's specifically focused on Generation Z, which is includes most of our, a large percent of our students at the present time. So we, we really enjoyed that, and it was a great 
kick off to our journal club. Next slide, please. So this is our faculty engagement for the future. As far as pre-semester planning, we found that if you do not look at your calendar um, before the semester begins, um, what happens is that there, it's really hard to add in the SciCap survey and activities once the, you've planned out your semester. So we've, we've decided it's really vital. It cannot be something that's just squeezed in. It has to be scheduled and it has to be deliberate and intentional. And so this information also needs to be um, scheduled on a master calendar so it can be disseminated and made available so all faculty and staff can participate in the activities as well. <clears throat> for our professional role modeling and identity formation, um, this has to be ongoing teaching, demonstrating professional role modeling, values, and identity formation that begins day one of nursing school and continues throughout our nursing career. Um, the continuous improvement, um, this stats in semester one is a crucial thread that um, goes through all four semesters from program entry through graduation. And we continue to evaluate what activities were successful and what we could always improve upon. At the present time, the SciCap survey was only given to our students in our nursing program. But in the future, we definitely want to include faculty and staff to take those surveys, to complete the surveys as well. In our PsychCap training, the Psychological Capital Interventions training, um, we were give, that was originally developed um, for business training in 2002. And the focus was on the work environment and trying to promote um, the positive strengths of the workers and have an impact on performance. But we have been given permission to adapt the focus for academic training. And our aim is to improve it through grid um, throughout the semesters of study. And as talked about, grid is nurtured through approaches supporting professional identity, goal setting, and social connections. Faculty and staff will learn and practice evidence-based self-concepts of guided imagery, breath awareness, and gratitude. They will learn and experience various integrative modalities to include mindful approaches, creative expression, and therapeutics in their clinical learning activities. Social and team activities will support student and faculty interactions. Next slide, please. So these were some of our challenges and opportunities for growth. We live in a rural um, geographical area in the Midwest. So we did have um, limited access to some community wellness practitioners, but it's very interesting as we have shared our wellness program um, with others, we have found that there's an increasing interest and that has opened opportunities where people who have an expertise in an area um, have volunteered to come and, um, for example, a yoga instructor found out what we were doing and she has volunteered to come to our students and to teach yoga for like a 20 minute segment. And so that's really great. And we hope as, as a wellness program um, enlarges and continues to grow, that it will open more opportunities for others as well. Um, I'm a transplant to Nebraska, but people in Nebraska say there's only two seasons. There is winter and summer. It's either extremely hot or extremely cold. And we have found that um, our wellness activities have to be scented based on what the current temperature is. So, for example, in the fall, we did some drumming activities and outdoor yoga. And that was great when the weather was beautiful and in the 70s and 80s. As the winter approached in Nebraska, we had to do um, indoor activities such as the rock painting that Shelly showed pictures of, um, aromatherapy, journaling, 
And then um, some outdoor activities um, include things such as the pet therapy as well. And that can be indoor or outdoor. And that the students really loved that as well. Um, so integration throughout the curriculum and time limit. As we said, um, we want this our wellness program initiative begins on the day the students enter the program. And to do that, we have to make sure that we specifically devote time in the schedule as we're doing our planning to make sure that um, that um, is um, in our schedules and we make it very deliberate and intentional and we set aside the amount of time because we also have a lot of core concepts that we have to teach. So we know we have limited time, but it's a priority and we make it that way by putting it into the schedule at the very beginning as we're setting out for our entire semester, we make it a priority. And then finally, the funding for education, specialty training, uh, resources and faculty and staff time, because it is a priority and because we want to keep our program going, we know we need to look at grants and other sources of funding in order to continue our program. And on, based on our baseline data that we've collected so far, we know that um, what we're doing is very effective. So we have to then figure out how to keep this going. Next slide. These are members of our Life Champions team. We have faculty from all four semesters, as I said, and the staff members are also included on the team. And I'd like to recognize one particular faculty member listed on the, on the um, team, Michelle Alamaya, who passed away last month. She was one of the original members of the Life Champions team and was a huge proponent of the importance of self-care and wellness. Next slide. These are our references that we used. Um, the um, third reference listed is the article that I mentioned um, that we use for our journal club. I hope you'll take the time to look at all these references and with, there's some valuable information on there. And then the last slide, um, these are an example of um, the rocks that Shelly had talked about. When I come to work and it's really cold in the winter here and it's dark outside, um, one of these rocks, the top one is on our, uh, where you fob in to get into the uh, building because of COVID. And it was so great to see this inspirational message there to you know, start the day, be kind, be yourself. The rocks were also out in the front of the building, some were placed inside. I have one on my desk just to remind myself, you know, this is how we want to start our day. We want to be inspired. We want to be uplifted. And I think those are great examples, really cost-effective activities that we did. So that's the end of our presentation. We look forward to entertaining any questions that you may have. And um, you can address it to any of us. And we thank you for your time. Any questions? Thank you all. This is really fantastic. What a great exemplar of how to integrate wellness in the curriculum. Um, and, and there are a couple questions, um, but yes, so a couple comments like the visual triggers, even the rocks are evidence based. How fantastic. Um, one question is um, I noticed that hope and optimism were low in both cohorts. Are there evidence-based strategies to promote hope and optimism in nursing students? Well, I can speak to that a little bit because yes, the PSYCAP um, constructs are evidence-based strategies to use to promote hope and optimism. And since we are just, you know, we're anxious to see what our second surveys look like to see if those students, you know, the, the levels of hope and opt optimism rise after some of the strategies that we've put into place. I don't know if any other members of the team have anything else to say about that. I would just say that um, they should be enhanced just by going through the training 
and then revisiting the training over time because the training is uh, developed to enhance those two two things. Well, all of them, obviously. Um, but a lot of it is, you know, like there was one example of of um, of somebody that said that um, that they didn't know how to study, and so th- they worked with their their team, little team, to kind of figure it out. And they said that th- what they like to do is to talk to somebody and tell them what it is that they learn. And then one of the barriers was, well, I don't always have somebody to talk to about this. And so then the person came up with the strategy, well, I'll talk to myself in the mirror because then I will be talking to somebody. So, you know, they come up with different kind of strategies on how to move forward with this. And we hope that it will just grow and then that our um, data obviously will, will improve too. I think with especially semester one students, when they go through that PSYCAP training, um, they, you know, they're optimistic and hopeful about being a nurse, but they've just been hit with that first exam and they are, you know, their hope and optimism might feel pretty low at that point. But they did, we actually have them diagram out, you know, here's where I am and here are the goals that I have and here's the path to the goal. And so I think just by putting it in, um, you know, down on paper, they gain some self-efficacy and um, learn to reframe it because other people had adversity and they reframe or they had addressed it in a different way. So the ability to reframe adversity is a big part of PSYCAP. And I think that that should help our hope and optimism. And I would just say, finally, as the team said, as we uh, evaluate those surveys the second uh, time, we hope to see that they've increased, but also planning to do um, the preference surveys with the students. What do you feel helped? What may not have been so helpful, knowing that that may help to guide our um, interventions as well? you all certainly have us thinking, especially with all the different integrative therapies and the modalities and the things that you've tried. And we are at the end of our time together, but we will be sharing your information as well as your slides and the recording of this webinar. Um, So I would expect you all might hear back from us and we look forward to hearing your results. Thank you so much.